弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Good evening, everyone. Ah,、uh, good morning. Ah,、uh, today we'll continue with part eleven of our um Tai Shan Gan Yin Pian, the treaties and response and retributions. Um, it's been a while since we uh had our last session, so I won't um I will go straight to the point because we already kind of repeat a lot on the previous sentences. So today we're talking about rebellious deeds, but um, after reading the um, after reading the um, the the sentences included in this category, it, it's more like people, yeah, rebellious in a way, like not just but、uh, on human, but on others, you know, like the na- the orders of things, like the natures, or you know, doing something that harms. Uh, that upset, you know, the the nature. So as you can see in clause forty nine right here,、um, you know, the verse forty nine, secretly employ black magic and occult practices against another, and the other half is to kill trees and harm plants with poison. So the first one, the second one is quite obvious. The second, the first one is, is um, put it in another word, it's kind of like、uh, ongoing like folk practices. In different cultures, you know, even in the West, the、well, the Europe, they have the you know the cult and all that, the、um, practices they employed, you know, techniques they employed for、uh, malicious intent. They are all part of this.、Uh, whether we believe or not in this is another matter. What we're saying is there are very active practices on such things, you know,、uh, breeding poisonous insects, you know. In order to plant it on someone else's、uh, body, or、um, and then applying some sort of a curse, they learn in the you know some dodgy places, you know dodgy as in the shady places, shady masters, you know some shady people, you know. So those are all、um, used to harm people, to hurt people. So that's. One of the category of rebellious in, in in this sense, not just politically or something, it's just harming people, upsetting people's life, upsetting people's、um, order of things, like the normal ways of things, and and that、uh, in causing damage, you know. So over here,、uh, you know, the whole sentence talks about Wu Ying. 换句话说，没有原因 So this whole thing means you do things without any. Cost you harm people without any cost. This cost refers to people who do such a thing without any reason at all. You know, without you know, no one's doing anything to you, but you doing this kind of um, you know, harmful stuff towards others. And this is quite common, especially uh in China, in 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 Asia, right? In general, is it? I'm from Malaysia. I've already heard a lot of cases people employing some sort of Cursed, you know, xia gu. In Chinese, we call xia gu.、Uh, mostly, it involves some sort of insects, plus some curse they learn from some. Yeah, I mean, they use that kind of、uh, techniques, you know, usually in employment of some people. Some people wants to get back at at the other person, but they don't want to break the law, being caught doing that. So they use that kind of,、uh, you know, employ this kind of sort of like a black so. Under like、uh, underhanded tactics against them, so applying curse, causing him to, causing that person to be, you know, upset in physically or mentally or you know, so if anything else, it's a malicious intent, and that thing is already very bad, right? Whether we believe or not in this kind of thing is another matter. It's not. It's not the point here. The point here is, you use that sort of hatred, malicious mindset. Whether justify or not is another matter, but using this kind of underhanded tactics is it's a no no. There are karmas in everything. People, especially those people who know better, 
and contact with this kind of art crafts, you know, occult practices or this kind of crafts. And if they use it in a way to harm people, they would have to resuffer the retaliation. Um, like they, they might earn a lot of money in one go, but in the end of the day, they will suffer a very painful death or a rebounds, bounce back from the effect of the curse they apply on others. All right. Um, this thing will always bounce back, no matter um, how well you hide it. You, you can't hide it because this is cause and effect, you know. Um, so usually they used, well, the whole point of this word Right. If you if you can see the um, bullet point, this is the Chinese word comprised of Chinese word of chong. Right. Chong is insects. Usually they used insect as a method to do that. You know, basically they put poison into other people. Um, uh, body, either through body, you know, through the drinks they contact with and stuff like that. Anything they use daily, they put some uh, poison in it, and, and then combine with some sort of uh, otherworldly magic and stuff like that. Um, I know it's hard to believe in this era of science and stuff like that, but w what we need to understand is this is actually basically just a malicious intent, intensified. We call it cursed on other people. All right. And whether you use the knife to stab people or you use this kind of underhanding practice, it's 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 malicious. It's bad. So that that's the point of um, this sentence, trying to say that you, why would people do that, right? And why would people be affected by this? They always go back to the foundation, always go back to the cause and effect. You know, if there is um, you know, if there is this comic um obstacle in the past that you incurred then you have to you will have to suffer from this you know otherwise people can't touch you even they apply it on you so in the end of the day you know we still what goes around will come around you know you might we might do this in the past and this you know this kind of effect will bounce back to us in future using this as a condition but um most of the cases might be due to the curiosities. You know, I think it's quite common, like, even in, in, in the whole world, right, we have our, our little folk practices in different cultures. And one famous invest is, like, something like, you know, you you, you have, like, some sort of a alphabetical sheets, and then you use that mirrors and point towards a direction. You ask some questions, and then that the arrow will, will move as it goes to the alphabetical order to form a words string of words to answer your questions so those are another common practice some most of the case is quite harmless but you know those kind of thing you know they are very how to say they are not normal people practices it, sh it shouldn't be how to say curiosity kills the cat all right I, i'm just going to summarize this curiosity kills the cat Something that should not be touched, like drugs, and this kind of thing, uh, just leave it be. Don't don't touch it, right? Unless you have the condition to learn how to cure people out of that condition, then that's fine. It's helping people. Otherwise, just you know, you play around a little bit, but it will still it will bounce back to you psychologically. Let me share about other stuff. It might not be as serious as this, you know, xiaku, basically poison people, but there are kids in my high school. Who quite popular. I think it's quite it's very fun in a sense because it's something that's not normal, right? They use some sort of a, in Chinese we call Hu Xian, some sort of spirits, lesser spirits. They use um, that kind of you know I don't know what the procedure is and I don't want to know ever in my life. Uh, but they they do this kind of like you know con commune in communion with the spirits kind of thing and then end up bounce back to her and she felt like Suddenly she felt upset and all the stuff without reason. And 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 it's, I heard, I mean, it's a hearsay, but it's kind of like, you know, there is an effect bounce back for me if we don't, you know, use it for the right reason. I mean, even for the right reason, just don't use it. Um, there are better ways to do it. <laughs> right in, in the in the temple, even in, um, well, that's not the main thing, but they will always allow you to chiu qian, right? 
that one is even bad. At least that one doesn't involve any, you know, some communion with the spirits. All you do is just, you know, ask your questions and you ask for some oracles. It will come out and tell you what it is. Okay, that one is all right, harmless, at the very least. So don't touch this kind of thing. And um, beneath all these, you know, words I'm throwing out, what I'm trying to say is, you know, these are malicious stuff, and people use this tactic to secretly, you know, harm other people, and it's upsetting them, and not just, you know, socially, but actually upsetting their lives and stuff like that. Some, some even cause a, a lot of damage and uh, it's quite it's reported in our in, in Malaysia and a lot of Southeast Asia you know Thailand you know. Um, so just avoid it altogether the opposite is to have a compassionate mindset the people with compassionate mindset will not do this and no matter how how big the grievance is it should not be done like this this is this is a self-destructive stuff it harms yourself in, invisibly you know no amount of doctors in the world can help you from this um cause and effect do, do not do that last the next one is easier to understand to kill trees and harm plants with poison same thing You're upsetting the order of nature in a sense you know those are supposed to to survive in its own lifespans even trees has life and you poison it maybe for your own benefit or stuff like that or you know to maybe you want to build a single crop farm or stuff like that you use those pesticides and killing um the side and stuff like that to do it and then might people might say oh how come we can have fruits uh and grow any crops obviously you know this goes to you know um how much do we need how much more do we need on this uh, we need to learn how to be more uh, thoughtful with our use of, you know, pesticide or you know, herbicide stuff like that, because it, it's already like quite clear this thing is going to pollute our underground water source. Because guess where the thing goes to? You know, the soil will flow right with rainwater, and then rainwater will flow to the water source. And there's only so much clear spring water we have in our world. So that's one thing which is already documented around the world. So it shows that, you know, this thing will bounce back to us, you know, whether, whether spiritually or physically. All right. Um, don't, um, like even it's a inanimate beings like rocks, trees, plants, it has, you know, its uses and it's um, part of a nature and we should, you know, in, employ a mindset of, you know, care and consideration, kindness towards everything, including the stuff we use. You know, they might not be able to talk or think like animal do, right? Hence inanimate, but they have exist along with us and we should pay the utmost respect. We should learn in this, in this constant, uh, in, in this instance, we should learn from the indigenous people, from the native American or indigenous Australians and uh, um, maybe the, you know, the Taoists, stuff like that. You know, the people who really understand how nature and human works. You know, not a thing for you to exploit. That's the mindset we have. It's the thing, resources we use, you know, and, and toss away instead of, you know, something we need to cooperate with. You know, we need to learn how the nature work. We need to use we uh, uh be moderate be consider be considerate in our in our use uh, of nature's resource you know, being grateful being being considerate and 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 i mean i'd rather have that kind of mindset where you know those things have spirits of its own life of its own than this kind of zero-sum game mindset you know i'm gonna lock all the trees and clear everything because those are only serve as a tool for me that's it so that mindset is not income it's not how to say sustainable and it's not enlightening it's not helping you to get anywhere other than expanding a bottomless greed and bottomless destruction which will bounce back to you one day whether you are here or not right um so back to the point and you know in buddhism we always have a, we have um 
for the monks there is a there is a precepts meant for the monk uh, Bhikshu and Bhikshuni the monk who practice you know path of you know Buddha who you know cultivates um, purity purity of heart do not step on the fresh grass this is one of the um, Bodhisattva vows you know because you vow to save all beings no? not just animate but inanimate in a sense, how do you save it? As in, you use it considerately if you have to. And if you don't have to destroy, destroy, don't destroy. You know, we all love beautiful trees and mountains. And guess what? This is because we respect the, you know, nature as is. You know, not carelessly use it. We use what we need to use, but we always think about how, how do we minimize the destruction. Always have that mindset in, in your mind. Minimize the harm. We cannot not use, but we cannot be careless in using it. That's the philosophy. That's the principle behind it. That should be the the education, core of the education, before we teach all this technical stuff. You know, how to do map better, how to create better weapons, how to kill people more efficiently, how to ex, uh, exploit, I mean, how to, you know, instead of, you know, bombing people for one war, you can use nuclear and make them... I just watch Oppenheimer. I think, you know, you can make, of course, you don't think like that. You think like, I want to save my country and, you know, these Nazis are doing that. But uh, I'm, I'm sidetracking. I digress. Right? But this is what we've been doing for hundreds of years, at least, you know, since the West has picked up the signs and spread it throughout the world and the world has picked up this mindset as well, you know, in terms of, you know, expanding the efficiency of killing each other. Especially, in it, that's one unfortunate thing. Because war always happened in all, all history, but this one is particularly brutal. Um, this is basically, you know, that kind of mindset over here. What we think about, you know, we use the resources for us and only to satiate this greed and endless hatred and, you know, and then using our smart intelligence to create even more destruction. So it is not really quite intelligent. It's not wise. Right, you can be smart. You can be nuclear physicist. You can create SpaceX and send tons of stuff up to Mars. But if there's no wisdom, then you can use that for destruction as well, and 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 it's going to cause more harm, right? So the mindset we need to have is, you know, always remember where where we use it. You know, what the consequences is, and and if you like, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. How do you minimize it? In your own power, we in your power, and you know, do what we can. So in Buddhism, we already have that precepts for the monks who have taken up the vows uh, not to harm all beings, you know, to be a bodhisattva, and, and just it's an education, you know, of love and care. If you can't even have a heart to harm a grass, a blade of grass, you will not harm people. Of course, living, breeding people, you will not harm small animals, right? So that's that's the message behind this. Do no harm. It's a um, simple word, but not well achieved by us as a species. Individually as well, the way we say things, the way we do things. You know, we always need to be aware, you know. Um, Do we actually say something that is, you know, has substance or is it just out of bitterness to harm people just because we don't like this and don't like that? Okay, we'll leave it at that thought. Next. Orange juice. So, what do we have? So, what is to become irate when being thought, 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 not really being corrected, maybe? Failure to be filial towards one's parents and elder brothers. Well, to put it in another word, the first one, right? There is another phrase mentioned in. Um, Previous Taishan Gai Yin Pian clauses. It's a, it's a bit different because 
Huynu Shi Fu in this case is with Man Qi Xian Shen is different. The previous one says you look down on your teachers, on people who give you lessons, to impart knowledge and wisdom to you. That one is invisible, as in you thought. It's a thought, state of mind. You don't. You look down upon them. You didn't show it. But this one is, you know, you showing your um, anger towards them. You literally, fl- um, you know, flip flip out and, you know, showing anger towards the your teachers in a sense. And um, and we have to understand the context of this sentence. Why is it called rebellious? Well, this is what most of us would think when we talk about rebellious. Deeds, right? Rebellious, um, uh, so sorry, rebellious uh, act, rebellious deeds. So, because first one is about teachers, respect. Second one, second one is about love and respect, uh, love, loving kindness. The first one is Jing, second one is Xiao. And how do we achieve great things, right? People say, you know, persistence and determinations and you know, no good people, no right people, but those are conditions. Those are very important elements, but they never can work if we don't have basic patience. And that patience come out of respect and love. And and if we have no love and respect towards our close person or family is uh, uh, parents and brothers especially and uh, the elder people who are elder, older than you um, if you have no basic respect love and respect towards them and if you have no let's say reflective power self-reflective ability when you were being corrected by someone who's supposed to teach you supposed to put you on the right path put you on the right track instead you lash out because you were being nagged or corrected how can you have any success in life? It's not possible. Even you have it, you might be in the result of you know your past life, but you can't maintain it because your mindset is not in the right place. People who are very patient, who are very loving towards other, considerate to other, usually they do the same for their own teachers, their own parents first, you know. Those good things, good qualities, usually are fermented from home. I use the word ferment because it does not just happen one day. It's a, it's a, you know, in, in some Chinese saying, education is a hundred years business. You know, it, it goes on for hundred years for a full, you know, system to implement thoroughly in a society. By the it's not something you can think about in like modern mindset with the kind like oh what's a KPI on this to this financial year? No, it's human. It's human society, and you know this mindset needs to be ingrained and needs to put in practice. And they need to have that society to work together to put this uh, mindset in work in in action. You know that's why culture and stuff like that is important because it has gone past the test of time. You know, and with other cultures work together, they take out what is not so good and they work on what is good and and, and influence one another. You know, that's the beauty of it. But also, you know, acknowledging a lot of uh, issues happening in in, in bloodshed and stuff like that. But, you know, it was this synthesis of cultures, right? In the end, still tell us something. This thing has value, you know. This thing from the past has its own value. It's what makes us human, who we are. And if we don't have roots in our, you know, identity, our conduct, that means we are like a loose cannon, fly anywhere, harm anyone. You know, there's no directions, there's no sense of patience and sense of groundedness in our action. That means whatever you do, you will be too impulsive and um, it might be awesome for one moment but it will not last long, you know. So we need to, we need our remember ourselves of our root and who gives us the root, right? First, the people who give you condition to survive, if anything, in this world. Mostly, it's done by parents or guardians, right? Whoever act in the role of a parent to you. And second thing is people who give you the understanding of the world, the know-how. 
the knowledge, the wisdom, hopefully the wisdom as well. Not just know how to do things, but when to employ it and when not to, you know. Bottom line, the morals, bottom line, those are very important. And these are teachers, mostly performed by teachers. Parents can also be teachers, but for the sake of uh, clarity, we can be these two main persons in your life will, will be important in forming your years because you can see a lot of students saying that this teacher teaches the um, classes very well. Uh, it cares about the students. Um, the students are cooperative as well. It forms a very beautiful relationship where the student actually remembers the lessons and the teacher actually... Um, hi, Melinda. And the teacher is actually um, very... putting. 100% in teaching it and it will influence this student for the rest of his life because that impre that impression in his mind it's lasting forever next time he treat other people you always use this teacher as role model parents are even even stronger you know you become your parents as you grow older most of the time right including myself i can see myself oh my god i sound like my dad something like that so this is uh these are things that you know this is how we learn we pick up, we mimic, we follow, we mimic the action and then we learn. So if we go against that, you know, so this rebellious is not just about, oh, society hierarchy, you know, you need to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, restrained and, you know, oppressed and always under the, the rule of patriarchy and all these big words and stuff like that. While I respect that we have a much more equal and better society, but that is not the root that built the society. That is, um, how to say, we should go for it, but we should not forget the roots. The roots is always family education. Those things cannot be gone, no matter what kind of society sentiment we have right now. If because this is how we were built, you know, in the in the society, you need to have a you know, family unit to build something. Even your parents are no longer here, you need to have some sort of parent figures as well in your life. So those are important, and you know, if one always in the state of rebellion, in the state of conflict. In the, basically, it's conflict. It, you can't learn anything. You can't take anything in. In the end of the day, you're going to pass that to the next one and they will do the same thing to you. And what does that tell about a whole society? It's a mess. That's why there is a need for this kind of respect and basic, you know, basic understanding, basic respect, basic love towards parents and teachers. You know, those, those are very, how do I say, it sounds like common sense, but, you know, it's getting lacking nowadays, you know. We can't just blame on children, and then the parents need to show that as well. Like, how to, you know, be reflective, self-reflective. Because people without self-reflection will always think they are right, and they will never listen. And just because they... No, they're smart, they maybe have a very quick mouth. Does not mean they will make it to wherever they want to be in their future life when they grow up. All right? People who understand, you know, are able to reflect, able to stand up on their own, lead me, you know, lead me, lead to you to the society, able to stand in a society and able to function well, you know, be a healthy individual, contributing to the society. And being successful is a person who has a sense of groundedness, you know, very grounded, very know where to go, step by step. You know, do not get too teed up, too agitated. And um, unfortunately, that's what we're missing a lot. You know, in as a whole society, I can't summarize everything, right? Some some really say everyone is like that, but. The tendency of getting more impatient is there because everything needs to be quick, fast, and instant gratification. You know, I want to play a game, I just do it now. See, I leak my own problem. So, you know, this kind of urgency to just get the enjoyment out and losing that whole thing of, you know, work for towards your goal long term, you know, thing that lasts is a problem because if we don't understand it early the earlier we understand the better we are uh, because you have stronger foundation more ground to cover before you have to 
employ what you learn into real life scenario. Um, so the younger it is, the better. You know, the best time, you know when the best time it is? When you're in, still in your mother's womb. That means the parents need to understand this. You know, be more patient, be more calm, be more... Well, I've seen kids usually, you know, like, they are more chill and calm when their parents are like that. It's common sense, you know, you, you pass down to your children like that, right? And people who are more patient, more calm, more understanding, considerate, they are the kids, right? They will not do this kind of thing. Even if it's something maybe, you know, she not agree with, she might voice it out properly. Like, a, like, a, like we all love these very patient and polite kids, isn't it? It's called an angel baby. They're very, you know, very easy to carry, very easy to take care of, you know. And uh, even if they disagree, they do it in a proper way. That means the parents doing a good job, providing the environment. And of course, if, if you're a teacher, you see some this student, of course, you want to give everything you know to these kids. You want, to, you want this kid to be successful, or surpass you. That's a good future. You know, it's a good teacher. And most teachers want to do that. You know, then maybe when they sign up to be a teacher, they think of that. But when you go to school and see all these kids doing all this every single day, and sometimes parents might even, you know, protect it without thinking, both sides, without without consideration, blindly protecting your children without making them understand you are accountable for your action. Those are what needs to be taught in the school. Every children. And it depends on cooperation between student and teachers. You know, right? The consequences of not teaching them is this one. You know, they become more egoistic, thinking, yeah, I have parents who back me up, so no one can touch me. I can just do whatever I want just because I like it. I don't like you, so I'm going to make you suffer, bully. I like you, so I'm going to, you know, do anything I can to get close to you. None of this is, none of this is good. Those are very abnormal mindset. Um, and, and usually how we act, instinct, uh, uh, by habit, very bad habit. I like this, I don't like this. And you act according to that kind of mindset. And the result is, more chaos, more bullying, um, less consideration, less cool head. You know, escalate into the adult world, war. Well, not, not that far yet. Maybe you know, competitions, um, unnecessary rivalry, toxic mentality, etc., etc., etc. Anything has to be conflict. No way to be more calm and cool headed. To to be more considerate. And then escalating the countries, wars, you know, short tempo, short fuse. So yeah. Yep, that's the first one. The second one is the Shu Fu Xiong. So first one is, uh, what Master Shin Kong say is, yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, Culturally, as a Chinese, we always have the mindset of being filial piety and being respect towards teacher, and and because you know that is the foundation of a society that can pass down its wisdom for thousands of years, despite changing of hands in the government. You know, they they are culturally continuous for a long time. Then this element is important, and uh, it's it's very important in ancient Chinese teaching. You know, but uh, of course now we, nowadays we don't have that level of reverence towards the um, teachers and parents anymore. And um, but in the cultivation perspective, if there if there is no sense of respect towards teacher, there's no sense of res love and kindness towards your own parents, that you can't go anywhere really. Even the worldly matter, you can't even go far. You know, people won't do business with people who has no trust, who has no able to think about, you know, others. You know, who just hundred percent all about himself, egoistical, over the top. You can be very talented. They might cooperate with you once or twice, but they will not form a long-lasting partnerships. Who wants to do business with these people? Who runs away every time there is, you know? when they sniff some sort of opportunities they forgot their contract promises 
No, right? Or try to find a loophole to get out of it. I mean, provided that, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, this thing reflects and it will escalate as you grow up, as your um, playing field is getting bigger. From house to school to university to society to, you know, the bigger stage to play. You, it will only amplify who you really are. And who you really are, a big part of it is formed by what you were absorbing in the, when you were young, what you've been, you know, sucking in when you were young, the mindset, the the, the mentality. So a person who would understand, able to improve themselves for better, is always have reflection and able to reflect, able to try to put an effort, show of an effort, real effort to drive themselves towards, you know, a better version of themselves, will always be welcome, you know, by all kind all parts of the society. In school, the teacher will like to help you even more with your homework. Your 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 classmate will help you with your um, issues. Maybe you have problem controlling your temper and stuff. You and acknowledge it. You understand it. They will still be your friends, and you will be reminding yourself every time you're trying to, you know, flare out, and uh, and you you will improve if you're able to reflect, self reflective reflection, right? teacher will help you and in work as well if you're always like a rock and not very dense not taking anything in they try but they're not your mom they're not going to do that even your mom can't even help you <laughs> if you're too dense All right so you know cultivation uh, yeah let alone like worldly matters you can even achieve let alone becoming someone who is revered throughout the six realms. That's impossible. Because you can't even open up. How can Buddha's word get into your heart? You can't even open up to someone who is close to you every day and try and have your best interest in mind. Of course, I understand there is this communication and you know generation gap and you know, parents that don't really understand what we you know, young generations doing nowadays. But there is, a, there is a way to do it properly, respectfully, communicate well. And of course, I understand there is also the perspective of parents not understanding the children as well. And nowadays, we don't have that level of, you know, you're always up to down, right? It's more down to up as well. I understand that. But, you know, love and respect do not change this. It does not change the fact you still need to be loving and respect. There is still this element needed, you know. With you, with younger generations, be older generations, because you will be older, right? Everyone in the 90s is now approaching 30 years old. Holy moly. And, and then in one day, we'll become our parents and we'll be in that situation. So you do you want to be treated the way you treat your parents? If yes, then that means you have done well. Right? I want to be treated the way I treat my parents. And I hope it means that you are kind and respectful and loving. Very constructive relationship instead of a toxic one, right? So whatever we've done in the past is too late, right? But we, we can change it by ourselves if we think about where we want to be in the future. Okay, I don't want to talk, drag too long. Uh, yes, Master Ching Kong has a story about this as well. We think we have no doubt. We no Ah, uh, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Master Chuo even mentioned that you can ask, "Where did I do wrong?" If you don't think you do wrong, and your teacher misunderstood you, your parents misunderstood you, or your parents a bit um, not communicate well with you, you know, like I say, patience. Because outside you will deal with clients and people who will demand even more stuff, you know, and not, you know, they want more stuff from you. And if you don't have that level of patience and, you know. Communication. You can't solve the situation. You can't make the situation better. You might escalate it or you might explode in a different way. Maybe you can't lash out as your client, you lash out at your own kids, wives, or husband, partners. So that's what I'm trying to say. This thing is, how to say, will be enlarged. So Master Jin Kong say, you know, 
even if teacher misunderstood you, teaching you wrong stuff, uh, I mean, uh, accused, I mean, accused it, didn't get the idea, didn't get the situation correctly, we can, you know, ask, where did I go wrong, you know, and what did I miss? Because sometimes you might not cover the grounds that you thought you have. You thought you know everything, you know, that's the thing of young people, especially Speaking of my experience, I thought I know this, you know, I all, all things covered. I got all angles covered. Daijobu, no problems, man. You know, I, I have think it through and everything is good. But then when it put it in action, you're either late and then you do something that you, some unexpected situation comes up and everything becomes not as smooth as you thought. Right? The first thing you might think is what goes wrong. Not this person didn't do that, that person didn't do that. That's not going to help. And in, in, in terms of some elder people come up to you and tell you, like, you should do this, you should do that better. Think first. Don't jump back and say, I want to bounce back and say, hey, what do you mean, huh? Like, I did all this. If you really have done nothing wrong, if you've done your part, try to get advantage out of it instead of trying to get angry and lash out because, it, you know, you will not appreciate it. Try to understand what goes wrong. You can benefit from their perspective because they might see something that you haven't you know especially elderly people they have a bit more perspective usually more depth and perspective than we are so just ask and if it makes sense then you know you will naturally feel like yeah i have picked up more stuff that's how you learn from mystics and if you think you don't have it you know you need to you know you say what you need to say and that's it. There's no need to go into the point of anger. If they are not listening or they're not taking it in, it's fine. You know, you just move on. Um, but most of the cases is we do not see the whole picture or bigger picture than the teachers. And we thought, you know, why am I listening to him? Right? You know, I have all these uh, understanding ideologies and all the, all the mindset. You know, why am I taking it from that? Okay, boomer. And, um, you know, in one hand, yes, they might not understand us. In the other hand, they might see it from where they came from. So you need to reconcile this. You can't just use your perspective and always think about they will need to understand me, you know. You need to understand them first. This goes both ways, right? Um, and do not use hatred or anger on this one. It's, it's going to be harmful, you know. All these talks of being edgy and all the cool stuff, it's not going to... It's not helping you in the long run, right? What well, sooner or later, the sooner you grow out of that, the better you are, right? That means you're able to form your own opinion, understanding, without being all, you know, ballistic. Without going ballistic, without going toxic, without needing to, you know, have a go back at people, senselessly. That means it's a rational, thoughtful. Hopefully from a place of understanding, compassion. That is how you can go very far in life. Because you'll be able to be more patient, able to take in more feedback, whether true or not. That means you're able to absorb even more information and able to have wisdom to use this information correctly. If it's false, you let it go. You identify this person stuff so i'm talking about this because i'm used, i'm talking about it in operative sense because this actually is beneficial towards you right because if people keep saying oh you need to be filial to your parents oh, why would i you know let me tell you why this is the benefits real benefits long-term benefits you know dealing with them is a is a microscopic view of what you will be dealing with in future you know you're from family from school you extend to society which is even more complex and complex or not it does not risk escape basic understanding if mutual understanding basic communication mutual respect and hopefully we'll grow into mutual con um how do say care of each other care for your colleagues care for your uh, boss care for your um you know, subordinates, care for your uh, people who are not your immediate family. You know, hopefully that will grow. 
that's how Bodhisattva works, right? That's how you grow into that Bodhisattva position where you can actually take in all goods and bads of the world. You can have all the goods and not having the bads. Goods and bads come together. It's one package. Um, yeah. That means you need to be able to take in more. That means you have a, need to have a heart of like as big as an ocean. Not just a little teacup easily explodes just because something doesn't go your way. You know? That's exactly what Venerable said. Able to able to have a flexibility to take in more inputs. That's basically what it's all about. You and your parents, you and your teacher. What does it all about? You know, starts from there, right? Your parents give you feedback, your brother gives you feedback, your sister gives you feedback. And if you immediately get all ballistic, which I sometimes do, unfortunately, you you go say words that you don't mean and you hurt them. And then when you calm down, if you have ability to reflect, you will tell yourself next time, maybe I should keep my mouth shut first. Listen, if it's not correct, try to be more cool-headed when explaining it. If you can't explain it properly or um, you know, maybe they are also angry as well, that means you learn how to read people's face and the situation you get better that's how you start learning how to deal with people right you you have to no matter where you are um and hopefully the right lessons coming out of this you know as in you get more patience more loving because you understand they come out from a place of love kindness especially from family most of the time it's coming out of that it's not malicious Right. There are exceptions, but even then, it's a better training ground for you. People like Buddha, right, was being insulted when he was going out asking for alms. And that person that insult him maybe you know, say something like, you keep taking the young people into your sangha and make them, you know, unable to produce like a normal labors and wood, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then Buddha was like, didn't say anything. Didn't have any face of anger or anything. His peace. And he talks, uh, he wait until the elder has finished and he replied back to him. If someone gives you a gift and you do not accept it and return it to the owner, does the gift belong to the owner or belong to the recipient who rejected the gift? The, or the, the elder says, yeah, it belongs to the owner because the recipient have not received it. So same goes for insult. Your insult is not accepted. By me, hence this insult, and this this insult is returned back to you. And I, of course, we can imagine Buddha is already calm and peaceful, right? He has no need, he has no emotion, like he didn't, he didn't have that. Nothing to ticker. Hence Buddha, and he 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 replied in a very calm and actually soothing tone. I would I would I would imagine I would love to hear his voice to be honest, but um yes, I digress. Uh, because I really love music, but his voice would be... Anyway, uh, back to uh, the, the story, yeah. So, so the elder was like, oh my god, no. Like, he reflect immediately, without exchange of heated, without any heated exchange. So that, that's what I'm trying to say, like, it's, you know, takes two to tango, it takes two to dance, right? it takes two to slap, I mean, to, to clap. So if one side is not in response to the other, so the one side only hitting the air, nothing will happen, no reaction, right? So, yeah, and it takes two, right? So if your heart is as big as Buddha, as big as seas, you will not able to be tickled with anger because you, or, or greed, you will not be seduced by greed or tickled with anger. In this case, it's anger. So, yeah, Master Ching Kong, when he was young, he has, you know, been with three prominent, I mean, three prominent figures in his own life. He regarded as very important formative years of his life, right? Uh, before thirties, right? Um, and one of them is Master Li, Li Bing Nan Lao Ju Si, and a lot of people under him. Remember that back in Taiwan, he's a big, it's a he's a big name. And everyone wants to learn from him, especially in Buddhist circle. He has a lot of students, but you know he has a very different approach towards every single student. 
you do not have that one size fits all because you understand which one can take it, which one cannot take it. The one can take it will always be scolded by him. Hence improvements, hopefully. The one that could not take it are very treated like guests by him. That means very polite, very kirchy, very distant. Like, ah, very nice. Hey, hey, to, to, to. Have some tea. Yeah, have a seat. The one that actually can take it, can learn from it, will be scolded by him. Hey, why are you doing this? Why are you not? Why? Why is this? Why do you repeat this? You shouldn't do this. Basically, what we call nagging. So, take from... I hope what we take from this is people who actually cares about you will only bother to tickles you so that you can be hopefully learn something from this interaction and improve yourself. In the end of the day, it takes two to tango as well, right? To learn, you need to have, you know, someone to teach you how to do it properly. Hopefully, give you more perspective. You take in the information and you improve. You accept it wholeheartedly, right? Without interruption from angers and emotions, hopefully. And... And then you improve. If even with emotions and everything, you allow it to pass and not lash out. You understand that this is ultimately beneficial towards your person as a person. You know, it improves you. So why am I angry? If it actually helps me to improve. And eventually you do the same for other people. That's how you help people. That's how you're being helped. That's how you're being safe. Right? Master Ying Guan said that if you have one ounce of respect, you get one ounce of benefits. You have 10 ounces of respect, you get 10 ounces of benefit. Right? 一分成敬得,一分利益,十分成敬得,十分利益。Ying said, you know, Venerable Ying Guan. Right? With respect, you can, uh, like, you can take it in and you can improve. If not, he will just invite you to sit next to other students and listen at the site. You will not direct his teaching to you because you can't take it. And you look the only person who lost is you. So that is school already. That's like from home to school. So if if parents, you know, also of course parents, you know, attitude. That's why we need to be better because if we want to be better in as a whole society, we need to be better ourselves so that we pass on to the next generation, no matter what role we are in their life is. Because if your demeanor is very calm and collected and you know, very chill, you don't always get lashed out and stuff, they will learn from you, as I have mentioned. So the second half is Di Chu Fu Xiong, right? So love, respect towards parents, filial piety, you know. Um, that is the end goal of Buddhism. Filial piety, not just to parents, but the whole being, as if they are your parents. And that means if you don't have even the basic concept of being loving, grateful, kind, caring, you know, patient, especially in their older years, in take care of their older conditions. It's something I haven't experienced personally, but my parents and my uncles and aunties have when taking care of grandparents. It's not an easy stuff. Real patient. Just like how parents were patient with the babies. But more. When your baby is still baby, right? But when you're elder, you kind of have your ideas, but you kind of cannot execute it because your body frail and you need to take care of their body condition. And their body has condition, but affect their mental, that which means mood, mood swing is getting bigger. You need to be more patient. And that is where you really form that love and kindness, right? Not just talk about it. Or just go around and hug and smile. Those are one thing. That's a good stuff, but they are not. They are not really that. The really, really formative one that really takes out your compassion. Compassionate is how patient you can be with someone who is actually very unreasonable, but who happen to be your parents sometimes, because they might have illness that so painful that they might forget. They might. Forget about decency or anything. They were like lash out and all that, you know, unreasonably. Those can happen. I've seen it in my life, not directly, but hear it from my parents. So those things are very realistic. All right, taking like it's in Chinese as a saying. Bing, bing chuang qian mei you xiao zi. 
there is no filial children in front of a bedridden parent. Right? It can be one day, two days, what about 10 years? What about 10, 20 years? One day, two days, what about one year? What about two years? What about three years? It takes a lot of love and care. It means you need to really like treat it as if your arm is breaking. You're trying to save it. You have to go to that level. I'm here to talk. I'm all talk right now. It's not tested yet, but that's what you have to have. Right? I hope, of course, we don't hope on our parents are too bad that, but like Buddha said, the four stages of human life, birth, uh, age, illness, death, happens to all of us. We might be that same person towards other people as well. Our, hopefully, you know, our children or our carer and we don't want that to happen to others, right? So, but this is the this is the passage we need to have to be Borsova. You know, this human. These are human stuff, and, and and perfection of human stuff is Buddhism. It's education. Nothing to do with religion, superstition, or praying to gods. It's all about how to perfect our humanity. Perfection of humanity is Buddhism. Or what is good about us, you know, the care, the decency, the kindness, restraint, no, no, no harm, consideration. Those, those things about us as human. We, we, we there's, there's this wide bottom line, right? Five precepts, and if you make it into hundred percent, crank it up to hundred percent. That's Buddha. That's it. Feel your piety, 100%. Even that person has no blood relation to you. You treat them as well as you would with people with blood relation. If not, better. Because they have no someone, like orphan or something, they have no love of parents. You give them even more. Because the others already have their love from their living, healthy parents. This orphan has no, none. Easier, right? And then what about strangers? Homeless people. Right? That's why all these major religious figures, they always go out with these people who are more less fortunate. This is natural sense of things. Just like water will always flow from high moisture area to low moisture area, from wet to dry area. Same goes for the people with high virtues. They will always go to the place which lacking wisdom, lacking love, lacking compassion, very cruel area. They want to purify it at their own expense. They didn't think of my own expense. They wouldn't think that I've sacrificed myself. Oh Lord, I'm good. They will just do what they need to do. Even they cost their life. And they were like, yeah, I've done my job. Now I'll go back to the Lord. Now I'll go back to the, you know, back to the pure land. Come back. That is how you perfect the human beings. Not biogenetically enhance some sort of uh, Frankenstein out of it. Those are touching the edge, not the core. The core is humanity. Then you have all these scientific advancement just to serve that course. That's how it should be. That's how science should be used. Right? To serve humanity, which is what we're trying to talk about here. Not the other way around. Right? In Buddhism, Buddha always have light, right? Ring. And then there is three um, Sanskrit. Like some of them has that. Usually they have that. It's called Ong Ah Hong. I think that one sounds like, um, you know, we always sing in the chant in our service and there are always this An Ah Hong, you know, when we chant the sutra, there will always be mantra at the end to finish it up. All this means an ong a hong. Ong is, you know, your action. A is your speech. Hong is your thought. Sengo yi. Action, speech, thought. See? Grounded. Very grounded. Day-to-day -day stuff. Nothing magical. This is not Buddhism. What Buddhism is about is this. Perfection of your action. Perfection of your thought. Perfection of your speech. So, what makes it unperfect? First, thought, I mean, uh, on, which is your action. 
no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct. If you can do it without, you can if we, if we can adhere to these three precepts to the fullest, you no, know, not tempted or anything. You just not do it. If you went at the expense of your life and stuff like that, hundred percent, then you have perfected Ong, which is the virtue of purity of action. A is your speech. Your speech. How do you perfect your speech? Your speech has no lie, has no, you know, double, double tongue. I'm sure. Um, first, your speech has no lie. You do not lie. You're honest. Second is you do not um, instigate conflict between two parties or more. So your word is not conflict. You're not causing conflict in your words. Always harmonize people together. Make them, you know, come together instead of divide. Make them more understanding, more loving. Yeah, it's a virtue. Number three is you do not swear. Unfortunately, I swear a lot. You got sailor's mouth. I, I, I confessed. God, I'm it awful. Anyway, yes, you do not swear. Of course, do not swear. And the last one is you do not. Um, use uh, flattering words, unsubstantial words. You know, words they are flowery, but they are not from your heart. They may sound good, but they are not coming out of your genuine care and love. So, flattering words. You flattered me, but in this case, it might be like you know, you sweeten up, butter up someone else. You know, I, you know, you um. Yeah, butter up someone else. Basically, you make their ego stroke their ego and make them up, and but you didn't actually mean it. And they misguided because of you. They mis. They thought, oh, this is how everyone thinks of me. Yeah, but you know, some people people like to be lied at, lied with. <laughs> like, oh yeah, sometimes you don't say good stuff to me. I feel good. So that's the problem we have. Okay, so if you can do this four perfectly, you know, no lying. No instigating conflict, no swearing, no、um, flowery language, no 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 unflattered, no over, I mean, no flattering language.、Uh, then you have perfected your own, I mean your ah, which is your、uh, purity of speech. The last one, hong, is your thought. That's very hard, guys. Thought is perfected. That means you have no when you think you have no com- element of greed. Hatred, ignorance, which is why Buddha can be so calm. Even when insulted, spitted at, you know, all sorts of action, he does not have even. He's perfected it. He, there is no hatred in that. There's there's nothing to. There's no oil for the fire to engulf on. There's no wood for the fire to engulf on. That's Buddha. It's like air. It's pure. Everything that is, you know. Fire, maybe or something, will not have anything to do with him. He's just basically non-conductive to this thing. So, if we say about that, it's just as Shaimini Buddha, then we misunderstood his teaching. He's a role model for us to do the same. That's the whole point of him here. Otherwise, this he can just pass down the words, and we just need to follow. But no, he show it to us. That's how it works. So does parents and. Teacher, they need to show it to us, and we learn, practice, get better, have a slowly getting stronger in our independent consciousness. That means we're able to formulate what is right, what is wrong, based on these experiences. Hopefully, the correct one, and we get better and better. Now, as of the Buddha's teaching, enhance on top of what parents have taught us, right? Multipliers. So those are important stuff. So these three: speech, action, thought. Is the core practice of our life, no matter where you are, no matter what religion you're in, no matter what work you engage in. Perfection of it is called Buddha. That's why Buddhism is across religion. They are not religion, but they're beyond. They can be treated as religion, but they're beyond religion. They can be treated as philosophy. They're beyond philosophy, because they're not just pondering. They're actually acting. They can be. They can be anything. 
but they are always about education. Um, yeah, 这三个字就是三圆满 So this this three speech action、um, thought. Uh, if you hundred percent it, you know, that means your ten virtues is is perfected. You know, people who perfected it is called Buddha. Okay. Right, right, right. So where do we start from this? Such a huge core undertaking. You know, how do we even do this? Start from learning how to, you know, love people. And how do you learn how to love people? Find a girlfriend, find a boyfriend, and then have a good life. No, those are mostly will only trigger desires. Which is awesome and amazing for three months, maybe one year. I don't know. I have no experience, but I digressed. You start from actual person who actually you need to actually learn how to love with your parents. They are most formative towards you, and then your siblings. They are the one that are next to you all the time, next to parents, grandpa, grandma. That are number one in terms of your cultivation. Then you talk about teachers, students, which is how you, how you, accept the input, how you go back, feedback, in a respectful way, not telling you not to say anything, but when you say, how do you say it properly, right? And towards your colleagues, which is just friends, how do you talk to your friends, your classmates, how do you cooperate with them, to work towards a project, stuff like that. Those are also your important part of your life. Then you can talk about girlfriend, boyfriend, which is your wife, your husband, or your partners, right? Those are communication. They're all about communications, right? And that's something I need to learn. That's something I think everyone needs to learn. It's not about how well you know. It's how well you can feel, understand, process it rationally while. Coming out of a loving place, those two are not mutually exclusive. Rational love is called compassion in the Buddhist sense. Love without rationality is just, you know, infatuation, obsession. You know, you just have that sort of, you know, mood swings up and down. Oh, you don't reply me to me anymore. I feel sad. I feel down. I think so much. I always think about it. It can apply not just on partners, on other kind of relationship as well. You know, so those those are rationality in terms of not cold heart calculating signs. I'm talking about a clear clarity outlook of life while not losing where you stand. You know, you understand that you know you have parts to play in this world, and you understand that you were born because you have a use. You are you understand your worth. You understand your weakness. You understand where you go from, where you, where you want to build up with, you know, and you understand most of anything is comes out from inside. Then you and then you look at the outside. You don't just go outside and chase it, chase the butterflies. You will never be there, because what is outside comes from your reflection of inside. You know, you only look for what you want to look for, right? If you don't want to look for that thing, you will never see it. So you need to start understanding where you are going with this. You know, have I done in?、Um, am I a person who is able to, you know, be better than what who I was in the past? Am I able to see things more clearly? And if I, if I, you know, truly want to care for that person, is that the right way to do it? Instead of just showering with gifts and all that stuff, thoughtlessly, have I done something really beneficial to them? If in my power, rational love, right? It's what Buddha is about. They talk about I can give you all this magic, all miracles and stuff. Those are only to inspire some sort of confidence, but they should not be foundation of your liberation from six dreams, or liberation from sufferings, or path to happiness. They are same thing. Path to happiness should be from you able to reflect, able to correct your course, which is speech, action, and thought. Those are. Speech, action, and thought—those are how you drive your destiny. Every single second, millisecond, you're driving it. You are driving it now, and you're still driving it into the future. So right now is what matters. Right now is how you learned to love, to care, and you can't expect to have that result immediately. 
and you will never get that result immediately if you don't do anything at all. So right now where you are is how you start with, you know, start with being patient with the teacher. If there's some feedback that might be unsubstantiated from your boss, you know, if you're an adult and you work, your boss might say something you don't really agree with. Think about it first. Check the facts. Go back and say if there's something wrong with that. Within your family circles, it's all about love and care. It's all about taking care emotionally as well. More than other part of the world. Because this is your family. That means your wife, your husband as well. If you're married. If not, at least the parents and siblings. That means you need to be understand where they experience. You know, or well, a friend as well. Right? Understand where they've gone through. Why do they bring up that sort of emotion towards you? Frustration towards you, if they have. Or why do they act like that? Right? And then trying to be there for them without you know, poking and have, have fun. Teasing is fine, but what I'm saying is like actually making them feel alienated. Like, oh, they, they're they not listening to me. They're just doing their own thing. You actually be there. You actually just be there. And then you just let that conversation come out naturally. That's that's also one form of love, you know. Just be there. It will come out naturally. Don't think too much. Like, just be there. Right? So Buddhism is, we might say, uh, near for, near for, near for. What is near for? Chanting Amitabha. Chanting Amitabha is just like breathing meditation. But this one has a blessings of the Amitabha 48 vows. That means they, they have that effect of directing your actions, speech and thought. See, it does not escape from this principle. It's always going back to this. Speech, action, thought. Near voice like that, right? You always drive. So they're trying to help you to drive towards enlightenment, which is what Buddha trying to tell, tell us. It's a very smart way to do it. But we need to understand why first, because we can't not think, and we, we have this, you have to deal with this, we have to do that. You have that kind of environment in your life where you have to meet a lot of people, right? You don't have that luxury of actually, first, you don't have, we don't have, at least in my case, I cannot say for you guys, but for my case, I don't have the ability to immediately quiet down or n not giving rise to so many wandering thoughts. So I need to learn the why. And then, and then every day slowly build up that confidence and capability to, you know, be more, to be a better dealer, basically. You know, be more loving, be more able to communicate less agitated, less rushed at words. Uh, hopefully, you know, it has, it's the same for you as well. You improve every single day you wake up. What does a person who really, really gets it in terms of respect and love towards parents and teachers looks like? First, they pick up really quick, you know. They pick up very quick on whatever they learn because they have utmost faith. Not blind one, like really, really aware, you know, like really, how to say, have faith in their capability, in, in their teachers as well. He gets it and he actually acts accordingly, not just blindly, accordingly. And eventually he will go to a place where he gets more and more, how to say, wiser and smarter. He or she gets smarter and wiser in their own conduct. They, they will be a reliable person you know, in wherever they are because they're able to analyze the situation. They're able to do things in accordance to the path of moderation, in the path of whatever the teaching is given. They were able to do... Um, execute an action, a plan well, you know, because they are disciplined. They understand, you know, what can be done, what cannot be done. They understand you know, what's the point of all this, all this. You know, they don't get caught up in, you know, little egos and details and stuff like that. As in, they understand that how, how much, 
do they need in order to get there? Um, because they they communicate well with others. They understand what the other person needs. Because all this is about service. No matter you are facing customer or not facing customer. No matter you're doing, you know, whatever career you are. Even in Buddhism, we call it service as well. Chanting service. It's about serving, giving people services. Even you're behind computer, you're servicing thousands of people, millions of people in the internet. So you try, you always communicate with people, whether you are directly or indirectly. And so this ability to com uh, empathize is very important. It's um, number one behind your virtue, you know, your, 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 your character. Yep, that's enough, I think. Ah, that's a story of a, you know, there's a story from this Treatise on Respond Retributions um, commentary. Uh, let's have a read. In Ming Dynasty, there is a person named Wang Hui Dao, Mr. Wang. So Wang is very smart. Uh, he has a quick comprehension ability. He picks up very quickly. Um, every word he read, every book he read, he can. You only need to read once to remember everything in there. That means he's very smart. And then he memorized very well. Eight years old, he can already write poems. Very good poems. Eight years old. Uh, and write an article, an essay, a thesis, basically. A, a genius, basically. Uh, he has extraordinary comprehension, extraordinary grasp at understanding things. However, he has one uh, downsides. When he encountered his teacher, he always have that. Maybe he, he, he always looked down on him. In a sense, he always like, like he does not treat it normally. Like you know, with reverence and respect, and take in as much as he can. Learn just because you're smart and eight years old doesn't mean you learn everything that is to life, right? You only know that. I think we pretty. You already know the book stuff. You don't know the life stuff. That needs to live on to get it. Um, so he treated his teacher with um, arrogance. Not directly. Not like this. Like irate while being thought. Not directly. He always behind his back scold him. Or lash out the anger. So one day, he keeps going on like this. Behind his teacher's back. Quit scold him, criticize him. Uh, and then one day he sat down reading his book. And then suddenly he fell asleep. When he um he's in the sleep, he um took a yawn and when he yawned, a little ghost popped up of his mouth. And this ghost pointed to him and say, You are supposed to you originally supposed to be, you know, number one getting number one in the rankings of the exam. That means basically you get the top score in Harvard, something like that. However, you know, because you always, you know, like right, you always score, um, showing impatience, you know, irritate at your teachers, you know, being disrespectful, you know, despite what he's trying to do is to improve you. So the, the heavenly, I mean, the gods have taken away your um, qualifications, basically, your um, fortunes, good fortunes. So from now on, you're not going to get anything, no achievements for you, you know, because that, that number one ranking in the imperial examination means he gets house, money, all that, all the good stuff, good life, respect, society, standard and all that everything's gone because he's very disrespectful towards his teacher and and you know the ghost just disappeared showing him the book that's recording the good fortunes of the people and his name is gone when he finished this encounter woke up find a old book that he had read he used to be able to read it one go and memorize the entire thing, he can't even recognize a word. He become illiterate. 
it's basically like I Alzheimer a case of Alzheimer. So yeah. To think about it. Yeah. We'll just let it be we'll just stop it there. You know. These are a negative um example of being you know ira irate being irritated towards your teacher. You know. Instead of being direct and say, you know, is this correct? Is this not? Get, you know, uh, get to the bottom of the matters properly. You know, you hold a grudge or you dismiss your teacher's um, teaching, you know, because of your arrogance, because you think you know better. You know, that kind of mindset, I know better. Or the, then you lost a lot of opportunities. You know, this one is very extreme, but same thing, you know, even this does not happen, what will happen is people won't take you in. No matter how many times you apply, because you're just not taking in. You you can't be thought. Right. You can't you can't be thought. So why would I want someone in my organization who is so set on his way adds no value to the organization? And um, you know, create conflicts. Why would you want that in your family? Do you want a partner like that? Right, very, very, very uh, stubborn. And uh, stubborn is one thing, right? If you're stubborn for the right thing, okay, fine. But like unable to, you know, be receptive. That's what I'm trying to say. Unreceptive towards others. Unable to receive and feel and be with them. Even they are physically there. So that's the problem, right? Um, and Buddhism is built on, you know, Buddhism is a form of education, which means teacher-student relationship. So this law, this rule applies equally in Buddhism, right? Um, if there is no, you know, understanding on importance of how to be very patient, right? Patience is a form of love and respect. It's a very important form of love and respect. Being patient, being able to take in and being able to process it without making it personal, being able to, you know, turn into, you know, are you alright? Instead of, why do you raise your voice at me? Instead of that, you say, are you alright? Becomes love and respect for in action. And, and immediately reduce the temperature of the room. I mean, it reduced the, sorry, it reduced the escalation. Yeah. And that kind of person can take in a lot of things. You can, I have to, I need to emphasize, no matter what, Buddhism cultivation or in career wise they, they get everything because they were able, they are flexible they're able to take it they're able to um, process it properly they're able to communicate feedback as well right not just blindly take it they're able to you know learn from the best feedback take it in without getting it personal understand this um, in the right way process in the right way get the right message out of it despite that person might be lashing hung, hurtful words, you might get something out of it. Or you do not get it like Buddha was like, I'm returning it to you, I'm not taking it. And move on with your life happily. Some people ask me, why do you keep smiling, Dylan? It's like, take off half of your IQ when dealing with people. Don't get too, too much thinking, too much anger, too much thought. This is not movie. Right? Just be simple, be happy. And when you do stuff that you are responsible for, 100%. Be serious, be taken. But when you're dealing with people, always leave that part of close one eyes, open one eyes. Right? There's a saying in old Chinese as well, like, How do you become Dangjia? How do you become a person who can you know, run an organization? You're able to close one eyes when needed. Not saying that you collude and bribe. I'm talking about small stuff, you know, not micromanage. Able to let live and let live when needed. Relax when you need relax. Pick up the right point and send off the right message. This communication, and that's only, you know, it will. It will it's trained at home, at school. And um, if you have not have that, don't worry. You can always do that right now. You know, when you talk to the first person you meet. 
communication. You know, is my emotion overriding every single thing I have? No, I can use emotion. I can be emotional. I mean, I can be more. I can express myself emotionally while being rational. Understand where, you know, what line do I not cross? You know, just enough. That's that's how we do it. Zhongdao. That's what we call li. Li jie. How to say in Chinese? We call it the um, the courtesy. Not courtesy. The cur- no, yeah, the 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 way of dealing with things. You know, the social courtesy. Um, just enough. No, not too much, not too little. Too little, it becomes cold. Too much, it becomes annoying. <laughs> it's just nice. <sighs> okay, so sorry, man. I'm just breathing. <sighs> so, the doctor told me that you need to take a deep breath every day because <sighs> I always rushed. And yeah. Anyway, last we have half an hour to go. Um. Let's do this, and then we'll p- probably open up for some, uh, you know, catch-ups and discussion, um, or you know, reflection depends. Uh, but we'll finish up this part because this is the last. 强取强求，好情好夺。To be avaricious and forceful without compassion and reason, to secretly infringe on the rights of the others, to seize, rob, confiscate, extort, and loot. Yes, rebellious indeed. Harming people. Um. All right, let's do this. A very forceful without compassion reason. That's one way of seeing it. The other way is just basically you want something, you yearn for something, you 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 crave for something, and you go out of your way to get it. And um, that's. This is a very broad way of looking at it. This sentence, 强取强求 basically you reluctantly get something out of your means and stuff like that.、Um, what is 强 in Chinese word? It has multiple meanings. In this context, it means out of your means, out of your, you know, where you are. You go to, you always stretch yourself to get there. That's not supposed to be yours. You know, it can be robbing, can be. Trying to get something that is, you know, not the right time. You might get it one day, but you force it. You force it. Basically, you've been forceful in your demands of something. Forcefully demand. Yes, there we go. I'm forming it now. Forcefully demanding something, getting something. 强取强求 So, what it means is 分所不当得而必欲得之谓之强 Yeah, something you should not get right now that you get it ahead of time, out of your um. Means that means forceful, and this includes、um, fame, you know,、um, money, you know, all sorts of benefits,、um, desires, you know, desires.、Um, like the most obvious one, wealth. You get something out of your、um, normal. Job something some wealth that you're not supposed to get. You've gotten wealth basically. You've gotten you've gotten gain, position. You know something that you should not、um, get too quickly. You get it using underhanded tactics, causing someone to lose their job, inflate yourself to get there. Whatever it is, that's what we mean forceful. You get out of your way, out of your qualification, out of your、um, out of the right timing. Right, it's sometimes you might not have qualification, but you will plunge into this job. That's different. That means this is the opportunity for you to improve because people literally ask you to do this. But this one obviously is doing without the right due course. You do it using underhanded tactics. You're not supposed to be here, and you force yourself way in by pushing people out of, out of the way. That will have consequences. You know. Will always have consequences. Consequences, consequences. That's all we're talking about. But we want to make it more interesting. Otherwise, it's just, oh my god, karma. Dylan talking about that karma again. No, it's more interesting than that.、Um, yes, if you force your way in to get something you want, you might get it 
by the virtue of your brute force. Basically, you might have influence, you might have uh, wealth, uh, smarts, tactics, you know, to to the de- 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 seat to get things out of the way. I mean, underhanded way to get it. You might get it now. The fact that you get it now means you already have that in your life, in your in your book of fortune. In a sense, basically, you have it in your account. You know, it's just that it's supposed to be set in ten years time for you to get to that level, slowly build up experience and stuff. But now you just get it ten years in advance. That means you do things less wiser than you're supposed to be. All right, you force the um. What do I say? Saji chi run, maybe kill the egg, kill the chicken to get the eggs. Instead of let it come out, you were like, oh, what if I just get the ten eggs out of the body from the chicken now? So I just kill the chicken and get the ten eggs out of it. Instead of let it plop plop up the egg every year, a long lasting stream of revenue. But what what I'm trying to say is, well, the Chinese words it sounds different in English, but anyway. Um, you, you 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 push ahead the timing yeah, forcefully when you're not supposed to get it yet. If you don't not supposed to get it at all, you will lose it very quickly. The fact you can hold something that you got it forcefully means that you're supposed to have it, but now you do it like this at the expense of other people and a very negative you know implication of other people. You you make people suffer in order to get what you want. That means what you want is discounted. You know, you're supposed to get it longer than that. You're supposed to get it more peace of mind than that. Now you have so many people hiding their grudge against you because of your underhanded tactics. One day when your time is up, sayonara, goodbye. You know, you either get backstabbed, you either get pulled down forcefully the way you do this to other people. All right, and you lose everything. Other people cannot touch you. What about your own children? What about your own wife? Ha! Huh, right? This happens. What about just suddenly a COVID coming in and ruin your business? Oh, wait, it happened. Of course, what I'm saying is not like, oh, yeah, everyone's like that. No. What I'm saying is this unforeseen element, will, they are called unforeseen for a reason. You cannot see it. All right? That's why do not force your way in. Do not be forceful in this term. The only thing, um, yeah, let's continue first. In um, so Always go back to the same old word. When you're supposed to have it, you will have it. Even you run away, it will chase you. Like wealth. They will beg you to have it. Because you're in the right place, right time. Your timing's right. Your fruit is ripe. You know, the fruit has ripened, ready for you to pluck. Or for the picking. If you're not supposed to have it, no matter how much you chase, you can't get it. Because you have not cultivated the right cost and let alone the conditions to grow it. All right? So do not forcefully gain something. Do not force your way in to get something. All right? Too much happened like this in Chinese, China and in, in, in throughout the world. I mean, talking about the whole world, right? All history of mankind, right? Some people are supposed to, in China, like right? some um, impatient crown priests who are supposed to get. You know, we watch so much drama and history book. Or well, the pro- crown prince of Tang or something. They're supposed to ascend or Han so ascend to the throne in ten years. Now he's impatient, trying to make something up. Now he forces his way and get his throne at five years, at the expense of a uh, political stability. So he's supposed to have a peaceful transition from his father to him. Now he stir up so much pot. Out of paranoia, maybe the other brothers trying to get his throne. God, I watched too much of that. Um, and then causing enemy to be made. Unstable transition means you know the past generation of kings and his minister, the political power structure is cracked up. And then when it hands to you, it's a messy situation. You're trying to use violence, trying to use all this deceit and tactics to balance it instead of having a peaceful succession right same goes for other thing you know in China is in, 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 in Europe same in US as well right they force their way in in what invasion of Iraq stuff like that you know that's not so they will get their 
Osama, Osama will get his comeuppance, but the way they do it is causing more harm rather than justice for the people who were innocently killed in 911. Right? This justice will be served. Of course, it's fair to hunt down that guy and have him properly, you know, properly processed. I agree with that. Not saying that we should retaliate, but this is what will happen, right? But doing this kind of planting evidence, saying people have West Memo destruction causing this, you forced the way in just to get that satisfaction. In the end of the day, doing nothing but more destruction, causing more power vacuum. You know, Saddam Hussein's gone, even worse, like ISIS and stuff like that coming in. So what I'm trying to say is be wise in the conduct of everything, just from smallest individuals to the countries, nations, to a company, you know. We always need to learn there's time for everything. Inaction is a form of action. See, I think everyone loves Lao Tzu's teaching, Lao Tzu. Right, in action, uh, not doing anything means you can do a lot of things because you have more time to have action plan out, and you're able to see the situation clears up better before you act, right? Before you strike, and when you strike, you do it with the least amount of harm because you already have enough time. You allow yourself more flexibility. Of course, some situation push down on you. You have no time, but you have to do it, given with the given resources. And those tide of you know opinions and stuff pushing you away. That's why that's another reality, real life that we need to contend with. But at the same time, as a person, you know, in terms of cultivation, we should not um, you know, force our way in. Remember, by the power of statistics, <laughs> power of the logic statistic. If it's true that you can force your way to get something, that means 100%, should be 100 or little margin of error. But how many people you see trying to force their way to get power, to get wealth, to get their position, only to be pushed back? You know, how many Bill Gates out there? How many of them didn't force their way? Of course, they have their smarts and right timing. I'm not talking about this, sorry. Like, how many people are trying to force their way into a position of power, a position of government, a position of you know, wealth actually made it. Very few. Right? How many people actually do that and actually success? If 100 people do that, 100 people got it, that means it's true. This is the way of the world. It should be respected. But how many people? No, not much. Look at all this history. Thousands of people died just to get a throne. You know, this faction, that faction, only to get, you know, 20, 30 years of ruling. And there's only one person who can do that once in a while, properly. And the rest, either, you know, like, look at the, um, just Chinese history alone, which I lo uh, love. You know, there's this Wu Si Hua, Wu Dai Si Guo, you know, the, the periods, intermission periods between the big dynasty. There's this 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, you know, killing each other, trying to get over one another, step on one another, and then only to be toppled by their own own ministers cause and effect right before your eyes. Ironically, that is the time where Buddhism is actually blossomed the most because people suffer a lot. They can't even eat properly. They don't even have a stable regime to build up their life. So all they have is asking to go to Pure Land or get the heck out of there. Yeah, that's how it works. All right? Spiritual help because literally there's no way to live properly. Because every 10... Imagine, just look at the, you know, the unstable region nowadays. This is the life, you know, that is sometimes, sometimes death is better than living in a sense, you know, because of this tortures and sufferings and all the stuff. So going back, right, um, to a more calm, sorry, I'm going really, I crank up like 300%, going back to normal day to day, even just in a peaceful, prosperous country, hopefully you're in, you still... You know, whatever you do, you conduct, you do your job, you do your part. Understand how this works, how you get what you want. And what you really want, you know, sometimes when you get what you want, it becomes pointless, tasteless. The chase is more exciting, 
than actually getting it. Most of the time, people would say that. Um, so understand that it's actually uh, not permanent. Well, I'm not saying you shouldn't chase. Right now, maybe I'm in the age I should, but in the end of the day, you understand that this is not permanent. This is just scratching the itch, not solving the problem behind it. Hmm. Slowly, we need to mature in our practice, our action, to get to that point. Um, for now, do what you must do. You know, do your job, do your duty. You're here, you're, you've got this position, you've got this position right now, where you can do this much things. Do it right, do it well. And then inspire people just by being, you know, respectful and responsible for your duty. Right? You can move forward, but only do it properly without forcing your way in. You can put forward what you want. Understand that it's time for me to push up another level, move up, push myself to another level. But do not force your way into other stuff. If it's not right for you, maybe that means that better opportunity come along. Don't think when. That, that wouldn't help. What, what you need to think is keep going, keep trying. Improve yourself. Understand. You know, relax. Go out. Have, have a drink with friends. You know, have a walk. And then come back. Continue. Hmm. So, if other people give me, I mean, like, non-willingly, like people, you know, offer to you some position, some, um, whatever it is, right? In this first half of the phrase, anything that is given to you or anything you ask of others or that are forceful, they are not like, like, you just don't feel right. I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't feel right. Like you feel like I'm actually stretching my way out of it just to do that, you know, and I don't need to. It's not like something I really need to. And then it becomes forceful. So this is the more definite meanings. Anything you, anything people give up to you or anything you ask for other people, offer to you or you ask of others or people offer to you, um, you cannot be reluctant. It has to be right, just right. Um, this is what Buddhism talk about: accord with the condition, sui yun, sui yun, sui fen. Accord to the condition, accord to your um, means. Um, this is a person who really understand um, the teachings, you know, the the way of the world, the way of the the universe, the way of the the life, the way of life. However, if a person trying to what so what is forceful? Define that, right? What do you mean by forceful, Dylan? If you, you try to use tactics, try to use schemes, you know, try to use scheme, it means um, the second half. Secretly infringe on the rights of others, seize, rob, confiscate, extort, and loot. So basically, all these underhand tactics. If you try to use these kind of tactics to get what you're not supposed to get yet, or you're not supposed to get at all. Or if you use your influence to push people out of your their position so that you can sit on it or you can have someone you want sit on it, that's forceful. Right? Yeah. You can't digest what you have if you got it like this. This is not supposed to be yours. And you got it like this. So even Chinese they say in a very physical way, you can't digest it. You you can't digest it. So not only they will lost what they get, you gotten gain, they will also lose what they have. Everything has a price. You got something you're not supposed to get, you need to pay up with what you have. These are these are these are the these are how it works. This is the rules of nature. Karma, rules of exchange. You know? Anything they use deceit, anything they use scheming, those are called invasion. Invade people. Right? You invade people's privacy, you invade people's space, you invade people's life. You know? 
can be relationship as well. Right? You apply this in relationship. You force your way into someone else's relationship. You know, to, uh, you know and that person, of course, susceptible to you and two person cheating on the others. And then the, these words become very clear now. Right? It will not last. Because if that person can do it to you, then he can do it to other people as well. Right? There's no trust in this. It's all just desire, you know, lust, you know, after one another. And when that, which is not going to long last, gone, nothing substantial, be, nothing grounded on behind this, how can you have a long-lasting relationship? It's all just excitement, like riding a, what? Riding a roller coaster. It's exciting. But ride it 100 times, you'd be like, oh, you want to warm it. This is how it feels. <sighs> okay. And we should not praise this kind of action. Uh, it's not something we should praise it. Like in movies and stuff, you might see someone like very smart and trying to scheme and, you know, like Ocean 8, and Ocean 11. They, they're very smart. They know how to do it. Of course, they will set out the bad guy and you know, they, they got what they want and then I'm just going to use the scheme to get back. But, yeah, like, if it becomes something like we all praise about laws of the jungle, you know, like survival of the fittest, you know, you're strong, you get what you want, you know, and um, then it's, it's, it's a big no-no for us, you know, it's, um, it's going to cause more suffering. How many days can you suffer? How many days can you enjoy if everyone eyeing on you to fail? Why would a person being eyed to be failed? Because that person gets something he's not supposed to be. Unrightful conquest, unrightful gain. You know, even you have power and influence, like I say, at the time, you can't have it forever. Nothing is forever. First thing, you will die. Second thing, people's heart will change. All right. Uh, all this, you know, talk of, you know, will forever be loyal to you and stuff, and 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 actually, you know, really understand. Having few people actually like that is rare. Real life is when the situation change, everyone will change. Most people will change, and real trust is built from genuine, you know, relationships with others. That means you heart to heart and you're actually trying to help each other. This kind of method of getting what you want is not. So there's no real trust in there. It's all using one another. Laws of the jungle. So it's going to hurt really bad. For now, you might get caught into the jail, you might fail in the end, maybe from a company perspective, you know, get ousted as a president, ousted as a CEO. But in, 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 in hell or something, after you pass away, you know, what you have in human is just bonus compared to what you will experience in next life. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd like to share something with you guys. Something interesting. If you guys saw the word money, What is money? All right, what is money? In Chinese word qian, right? Let's show you that. I love the word. Lie, 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 lie. Let me show you. This is in Can you guys see it? Yeah? Why is this our slow? No, no, no. What's the picture? There we go, guys. How does the word money come from? First, in Chinese word, it's a symbolic letter. In this case, you can read the meaning of money beyond just a currency. It's a picture. Left side is gold, right? Word for gold. Right side, because left side, right, is like a spade. So back then, they used that as like a farming tool and stuff to exchange for money, which is the currency to exchange for goods. Right side is weapons. So everyone fighting for money. 
means money, right? That the mean that the means of production, I mean the means of income that everyone fight each other with is money. Basically, a source of conflict in a way. So such a <laughs> straight to the point word. Nowadays, remove the you know the the actual meaning of it. You know, remove the weapon, which is ge, right? This is simplified Chinese. They still have that, but um, yeah, ancient Chinese like the um, old Chinese. That means two sides fighting for the means to live. You know, the the money. It's money. So it's conflictual in nature. And if it's not used wisely, it will hurt people, family, and everything. Um, so how do we solve this problem, right? We, I can't just keep telling you, oh, it's bad, it's bad, and then and then not going anywhere. Uh, I have to say, Venerable Master Ching Kong has go real deep on this one, which I love to explore more than one session. I will also use that in the Buddha story session. This is all about war, you know, who I am, what I want. So it's about ego. And ego means, you know, what I get what I want, no matter what, that becomes you know, lost to your desires, You're losing that control, the sense of rationality. Understand that this is not what I'm supposed to do. It, you know, this is not how helping me. This might satisfy satisfy my desire one moment, but it will not last. So. Um, using that word, money means conflict. Physically, money means conflict. <laughs> two swords against either, two weapon against one another to get the means to live. That means money is conflict to re warn us, you know, how we should treat money with caution, you know, with um, share it, hold it by yourself. You are bound to have conflict. Uh, but how, what do you mean by share it? You use it in the... No, you don't chase for it blindly. Just live in your means and have a good, peaceful life. You're right? Like in Buddhism, even like people fight for money, fight for the right towards the inheritance of the temple back in the days. I hope it wouldn't happen again, but family fighting over the money when parents pass away. Is the most classic example. Classic fight for inheritance, fight for trust, multi billion dollars. The bigger the money, the more fear ferocious the fight is. Right? That's why you can see some wise, well, I don't know if they actually do it, billionaire or something. I'm going to donate everything because I already give my children the means to find a living. Come on. If your parents is Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, or whatever, you will have a very strong relationships with other people in the business if you make use of it properly why would you need your parents multi-million dollars if you can make your own right just by virtue of landing in one of those top firms right that's what i'm saying by wisdom i'm not saying that you shouldn't gain anything improve your physical life is live in your means and and for everyday people we don't have that of course hopefully we never have that kind of conflict um so remember that. Be very cautious when it comes to money. Right? Make it clear, make it succeed, make it, you know, very fair as much as you can. Rather well, have a bit lesser than more. Yeah. The lesser it is, the more less trouble it is. Just enough to survive, just enough to get by. Not telling you to actually live like Buddha back in uh, under the trees. Well, which I love to have if I have that kind of opportunity, but yeah. That is real wealth. That and then there, mustn't go in and talk about what is real wealth. Able to eat, able to have clothes, able to have shelter. That's exactly what my great grandfather said. All I'm asking you guys is you have something to cover your head, which is shelter. You have something to eat. Right? You're not hungry. Three meals, just nice. No, I eat too much actually. And then you have clothes to wear. I eat like snacks like crazy man. So um and then you're close to wear. Too much. See? It's wealth. This is wealth. That's it. 
anything beyond that, right, is uh, excessive. It should be spent on something more meaningful, hopefully, which I haven't. Yeah. So much senseless spending. Zhu Xun, right? This is the, the, the teachings of the ancestors. And, 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 and I think I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of Asian parents would teach that as well, hopefully. That's all you need. And, and once you reach that, you know, shelter as in, in my case, I would say rental. Of course, who wants to rent for the rest of the life, might as well buy something. But for me, it's like, if it's not the right time, don't buy it. You end up with more pain than you thought. Master Shin Kong say, once you earn enough money, right, just a little bit of savings, go stop the work for a couple of years because you have experience. Go out, experience life, as in go to temple, stay long term, actually do something if you have the right, um, like I say, if you have a couple of savings and stuff and just go and do it. Improve the other elements. You know, not just the physical, the spiritual part of it, and then come back when you're running out of money and work again. That's how it works. If you're a lay person, of course. Right, so I'm going to pause here because we have so many good stuff which I need to process from Master Ching Kong on this one. I love it. Absolutely love it. And it actually relates to what I'm trying to say in the um, Sunday talk as well talks about what is me who am I what is my body you know all this is because you want to take care of this body you have no need for this body you no need for shelter no need for food no need for clothing right but we need this body and this body needs to be put in the right position like right used so that we don't chase after things that are harmful to others and ourselves in real sense they are meaningless in the least worst way. The worst way is you harm others. The least worst way is, you know, it's useless. It's not helping anything. Like, you can, a couple of seconds of fun and then gone. Your life, your time cannot get back. You're gone, you pass away, and then whatever next life is, you don't know. Whatever next life is, that's the worst thing you can have. So, how do we use this body properly? All right. But this is the result of not aware of why we have this life and use it in the wrong way. This is misguided. Once people understand what it means to get, you know, live in your means, understanding how things work, how you get what you want by cultivating the roots. Best thing is you cultivate the conditions, the cause and effects, and then let it happen. Do not think about when you get it. And the best thing is, like Buddha, he doesn't even think about it. He just do what he needs to do as a teacher. He helped every sentient being. And he didn't just say, I want to help you. I, like, he, he didn't force himself, force the message or something. He just never do that. He always go by and he, he understand there's condition, cause and effect. And people come up, people will show up. You do what you need to do to help them and then you move on. You know, if they accept it, they really take it, they really benefit from it, they will naturally come to you. And you can help them even more with better stuff. Right? It's always up to, it's always the timing and when the people is in the right position in their mind, you know, mindset, they will naturally come together. All you, we need to do is do our job well and then rest peace of mind, have a very peace of mind, like a fertile ground to grow something good out of it, not a messy weed, which is the wandering thoughts that we have. If the, if the ground is full of weed, you can't grow good crops out of it. There's no fruition of enlightenment, right? So we need to have a stable ground to grow in, you know, and, and be very grateful where we are at here. And then we move on, trying to be more contributive and better. So this is how we grow truly, no matter what, part of the society you are, what position you are. Okay, I'll stop here. It's 10 o'clock, exactly. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, 
and live to teach him for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo, 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 Amitofo.